So we're going to do a really basic video of this machine that I have listed on Etsy. So let's do on first. We have an on switch right here. And the machine has a light, everything's working. Let's do our threading. You have two spool holders here. Put one right here. Into this, into here, Oop, in there. Around your little discs and it is Basically, here's your guide. So you'll put it right along this little guy and up until you engage the hook. Look, up. And now we went over the hook right here. You can see that? Good. Now we're gonna go, oops, through here. Sometimes you have to hold it to get it in there. There you go, see? So now when you bounce it, you're gonna engage the hook. I mean, so the spring, I'm sorry. And the spring will bounce back and forth. And then through here. Then down, and then into this little place right here. What's the matter? It's okay. And then into your needle. All right. And there is a slot for a double needle. That's why you have these two right here. Okay, so we're in. You wanna sit? Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so this is your bobbin case. Let's take this out. Now you're done. Okay, so your bobbin case pops in. There you go. In. I'm gonna go into that hook area and till we get into here. And just put it behind your hand and stick it in there. And it's gonna pop in all the way. And then you're gonna use your hand to go down and up to get your bottom thread out. Here we go. And now you are ready to sew, okay? Close this up. Done. All right, now this comes off. So if you push this button right here, this pops right out. So this is a free arm machine. It makes it really easy for you to put a sleeve on here and sew something. So there you go, see how easy that is? So you can literally sew a sleeve like this in a circle, which you can't do on a lot of the vintage machines. I'll put this back in. Um, it's in really good condition. It has a few scuffs right here. Um, one or two on top, nothing major though. The machine is very, very good condition. Okay, so we'll just start with just this four pieces of, um, it's a little stretchy cotton I have. Okay, so machine needs to be on the red dot and on the red dot up here in order to sew, to go up, up, to show the dot and tilt. There you go. Like this. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. So that is where you need to have it in order to, um, in order to, to sew on the straight stitch, okay? So, I'm sorry. And then this needs to be on zero. So basically red dot, red dot, red dot. All right, let's go. There's our stitch. See? Very clean stitch. And this is gonna regulate your, um, your uh, stitch length. So on zero, it's gonna be in the same spot, obviously. Um, on six, it's going, no, you're not going down yet. So here we are on six on the biggest stitch. All right. Clean stitch. Now we're gonna switch to zigzag. This is going to switch you to the zigzag stitch. There you go. That's a nice wide zigzag. Good for sewing knits, you know, all that good stuff. Oh, also this you wanna have on probably four. I usually keep it on that. There you go, okay. Now let's go to our three-step zigzag stitch. It's basically the same thing if you look at it, but it creates three steps before it goes into a full zigzag. So if you want an actual zigzag, you're gonna to wanna to shorten this stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is great for sewing knits because it's gonna stretch, but because there's so many stitches, it's gonna keep the integrity of the stitch. Okay, then you have your blind hem. There you go. Huh? All right, 
Then you have, I think they call this an overlock stitch. It basically goes a little forward, a little backwards. I personally am not a huge fan of this stitch because I prefer the overlock. But you see, it will protect your seams. It's, it's, a, it's a neat stitch. It's kind of like creating a little overlock. Um, and then, I don't even know what this one's called, but here it is. Okay. And so this machine does not need cams. All the cams are built in. Okay, so look at this one. That's a very cool looking stitch. So you can see it on the white. Okay. And then we have this one right here. Okay. And that will basically sew it look, with three stitches a piece in the same spot. Very cool. Look at that. Three threads. And so if I did that on number on zero, oopsies. I'll show what that looks like. Yeah, honey, we'll go down a minute. I have a toddler who's not happy with my lack of presence. So check this out. This is actually three threads in the same spot. Look at that. Vivi, to stop it. Here. Come here. Here, honey. Look, look at this dolly. Okay. All right. Um, so the foot is back here. You lift the presser foot. You drop the presser foot. Very simple. Okay. This is your um, the pressure of the presser foot. So you want to control the pressure by pushing this down, and that gives you more pressure. If you want to release it, you push the outside of this, so that gives you less pressure. So you can control how things are moving. You don't need to move it up and down, just back up, Romo. <laughs> Moving it up and down just makes people dizzy. Okay, so again, this gives you less pressure, this gives you more pressure. All right, now let's go back to our regular stitches. And I believe that if you, I'm actually not, yeah, if I, if I hit any of these stitches in reverse, in with R, it's actually gonna sew these stitches in reverse. Yeah, look. I can literally set the machine to go backwards by putting in R. So you don't really wanna do that unless you're sewing backwards. So we're gonna go back to our straight stitch, which is our orange. We're gonna go back to our orange here, orange here, and then here you can have free arm design, but I like to stitch on the absolute highest. This also will hit you in reverse. So if you want to sew straight and then reverse, okay. there you go, that's gonna do that for you, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how easily it goes over chunky things. See that? That is a lot of fabric. No issues. Look at all this. And this is not a thick needle, mind you. So look what I just did. I literally sewed over all of this together. Now this machine is all metal. There is no plastic gears. I'm sure you've heard about the Kenmore's 158 models that, um, that, show, that uh, have plastic gears that break. The cams are built in. They are metal cams. There is no plastic. This one is a common plastic gear on one of the 158 models. This is not one of those models. This is a Japanese made machine. It is all steel. Um, it has been fully serviced. It was not in the greatest shape. The belt is brand new. It has been um, oiled. It has been has been here cleaned up. Somebody put uh, grease in this machine. You don't want to put grease. You want to put only sewing machine oil. Don't use anything else. Don't use um, what are they using? The, that jelly. Sometimes people are trying to use. Don't use any of that. Use only pure sewing machine oil. Only in the spots that have movement. Um, it's not necessary to over oil your machine, but it has been fully cleaned up. Um, we've serviced everything. I've checked every single gear. I've tightened it up. The belts have been redone. So this machine is ready to go and it's going to last you forever, forever, ever, ever, ever. The only thing that can go wrong in these machines is that the belts will eventually wear down, but that's going to take you another decade probably before any of that happens. Um, so here it is full circle. Okay. Oh, and of course the bobbin winder, I forgot to mention that. 
So you have some bobbins right here. You're gonna put a bobbin right in here. This is why you have a second spool. Let me put a spool on there. Here, there we go. So you literally can, here, this does not actually, this is, so this top part, the bottom part right here, this is for the sewing. The top part right here, this disc, sorry, I'm missing it there. This disc, Romo, could you film for me? Okay, there you go. This top disc is for your bobbin winding, you see that? Okay, so that's it's in the top disc, and we'll just put it around here. We wrap it a few times, and then we would engage our bobbin by pushing this down. Okay, this bobbin is full, so it's really not going to do much. Oh, I actually wrapped it the other way, but it's it's that way. And you're gonna just go, and literally it's going to wind itself until it's completely full, and it's gonna pop off. That's it. Very simple. So you can technically have this on here at the same time. I don't like to because sometimes these two will intertwine. So I, when I'm done, I usually just take this off and I leave my spool alone here. Uh, that's it. Again, if you have any questions, contact us and let us know. Thank you so much.